I drove downtown, late of course, I wondered what Penny would be like. It was a funny arrangement, standing in for John, who was now married and living in Sydney. You see, John made this date with Penny five years ago, when they were both at college in Melbourne, and now he gets me to keep it for him. This could be Penny. Funny of me to be feeling so nervous about this. Anyway, we'll see. Penny! It was Penny, all right. I explained that John and his wife had moved to Sydney and had asked me to entertain her. So we set off to tour the city. Penny had only caught a glimpse of Launceston from the aircraft coming in from Melbourne an hour earlier. So I explained how it's situated around the junction of the North and South East rivers, where they form the Tamar, which flows 40 miles to Bass Strait. Launceston, gateway to Australia's island state, is truly a garden city with a romantic atmosphere. We drove around the quadrant with its old world charm and passed the Queen Victoria Museum, behind whose peaceful portals lie stirring stories of Tasmania's past. The suburbs stretch away up the surrounding hillsides in a fantasy of colour. A quiet retreat where people take their ease and children play. Back to the rhythm of the city and off to lunch. We chose the Cornwall Hotel where John Pascoe Faulkner and John Batman first conceived the idea of Melbourne, Penny's home. Preserved by the present owner is a plaque which describes how Faulkner and Batman discussed their plans for a little village across Bass Strait, a little village that was to become the hub of a thriving metropolis. At Royal Park, we looked upon a reenactment of the first settlement of Launceston. Here that Lieutenant Colonel Patterson and his small band of men hoisted the Union Jack over 150 years ago. Leaving Royal Park, we sped on past the old mill and over King's Bridge to see one of Launceston's unique beauty spots, the Cataract Gorge. Hewn from solid rock by glaciers during the Ice Age, the gorge presents an impressive array of scenery. Below us was the first basin, and beyond the swimming pool, set amidst green lawns and native bushland, a favourite haunt of Launceston sun worshippers. Penny asked if the swimmers dived off the suspension bridge. I said no, but they did dive from the rocks down there into what used to be a foaming cataract, where in a few minutes they were swept into the center of the basin. But those teeming rapids have now been harnessed by man in his quest for hydro power. Penny wanted to try her hand at a round of golf. In a few minutes we were at King's Meadows Golf Course.
this coaching method usually gets results. Anyway, better men than I have fallen at the dreaded 13th at King's Meadows. Next morning, the air was crisp and refreshing as we strolled through City Park, foliage of the oak and elm trees dispersing the sun's rays to form a myriad designs across the lawns to the edge of a large pond with its own miniature lighthouse and ducks and swans gliding serenely across its tranquil waters. I thought of taking Penny the 20 odd miles to Mount Barrow, so we quickly changed and set out through the eucalypt forest that wound around the valley floor. Mount Barrow looked impressive in the sunlight, rising over four and a half thousand feet to the summit. The road snaked almost to the pinnacle and our rock climbing wasn't very far. I must admit the view was worth the effort. Time passed quickly in Launceston, and we spent the few remaining days shopping or visiting some of the 34 parks and gardens. Prince's Square took Penny's eye with its attractive Baroque fountain that breathes across the square a little of the spirit of Paris from whence it came over a century ago. Towering above the oaks, the spire of St. John's counts off its own ripe years. Across the way is Chalmers, with its blend of Renaissance and Gothic, and a few blocks further on, the Church of the Apostles. Soon we had only one day left. We decided on a picnic at Coral Lynn, set on the banks of the ever-changing North Esk River. All too soon, our holiday was over, and I left Penny with the promise that I would meet her at the airport on the morrow. Penny seemed surprised that I was an airline pilot, but also relieved that she thought I'd forgotten her. As the engines coughed into life, we made a silent vow that we would return and live again our appointment in Launceston.